checking out the latest episode of our wrestling rumors and fantasy booking episode. We could go British on it and say tuning in. I'm Chubbs. I'm Chuan Shake. <laughs> no? No? Uh, like, share, subscribe. Facebook and Instagram, na.podcast919. Twitter, na underscore podcast919. And SoundCloud, na podcast919. Uh, I, unlike most weeks where I say, I don't have any rumors, I have a full page of rumors today. Now, I usually check every, every day after we do the show, leading mm-hmm. into the show. That's usually why I have a bunch. I, uh, I checked my phone yesterday while I was handling some business. So going to the bathroom? Yep. <laughs> and I found a bunch, and I was like, ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, and then I, I went the extra mile and wrote them all down. I just take screenshots of the ones I find. Now, I'm going to start off with uh, Braun Strowman. Apparently, uh, at a recent event in Nashville, uh, he was caught begging for forgiveness from Karen Jarrett. Um, for those of you that don't know, she previously had been married to Kurt Angle and has two kids with him. Uh, she was at this event. She was trying to get an autograph for one of her sons from Braun. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Jeff Jarrett pulled him aside and yelled at him and said, that's Karen Jarrett. She's going to go tell her ex-husband, Kurt Angle, that you were a dick. And Braun did not want that to happen and is reported that like he pleaded with her for forgiveness. Like, I feel like I need to hear more behind it. Like, I I always think with the wrestlers, it all depends on how you address them, and like, what you expect. Like, there are too many people that expect, "Hey, right. you're you're this person. Give me yes. an autograph. This is what I want." Opposed to being cordial and like, "Hey, how you doing? Do you have a second? Right. Do you and mind? if it's one of Kurt's sons, why can't Kurt just get it for him? Yeah. <laughs> Like I mean, I, unless she was there with them, and it was more, "Hey, we're here right now." Yeah, no, it was it was some like party. It, it was um, was it Jeff Hardy's CD release party? So he was probably drunk, knowing knowing Braun. Yeah, he's a drinker too. Right. Not saying that's an excuse, but the same. And who's to say he was actually rude? I mean, big guys come off as rude when they're not. Yeah, and and his normal speaking voice isn't. I mean, it's obvious not as brawn like Right. Like, but still, he's a big dude with a big voice. Yeah. I, I'm i sure there's there's got to be more to it. Um, and anything that has to do with Jeff Jarrett or anyone he's with, I always take with a huge grain of salt. Agreed. Um, so, this one isn't really a rumor, but it, there's a hashtag going around called, uh, it's hashtag fire road dog. Um, because of he's head of creative on SmackDown, supposedly, um, and a lot of fans have not been pleased with the product that he is rolling out. Well, they can be, but in the same, it's not. Even though he is, it's not like he just gets to do it and it just goes out no matter what. Right, it still and has it, to be approved. It's not like all of it's terrible. There's good stuff, but people are just like this part sucked, so the whole thing sucked. I mean, there are times where that's applicable. Yeah. But not for everything. Right. Like, Battleground overall didn't suck. Well, it's like, it's like you can have a really good match that ends a crappy way, and it t- it makes the whole match feel null and voided. Yeah. Like, so for then, me, that Kevin Owens-AJ Styles match... Yeah, you hated the way where, it ended, and it didn't bother me yeah, at all. Yeah, AJ got stuck with the count out. Yeah. Um, I'd much rather it end that way opposed to the champ walking out and getting themselves counted out. I just feel like it's more crafty for them to try to find a way to get the other guy counted out. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. Uh, I also think it's funny that Road Dog, a grown man, is blocking people on Twitter that disagree with his And choices. it's not like he hasn't been in the business for years and doesn't know that wrestling fans can be hostile. You right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he was a wrestler, and he's been doing this for long enough where he should be more accustomed to it. Agreed. Um, so... <coughs> Speaking of Battleground. But you know what? what? What if he's doing it on purpose? Well, I mean, he's doing it on purpose. But what if he has a thought behind it? I've been thinking a lot lately that some of the things were like, 
was that a botch or was this done on purpose? I feel like WWE is doing it on purpose because their ratings have been so low. They're just trying to get people to tune in. So what if this stuff with Road Dog is literally a ploy? They're just like, well, now I like wrestling, but I haven't been watching. Now I'm going to watch to see if there's some crap that's messed up and then see what Road Dog has to say about it. And You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing with like the AJ and Kevin Owens finish at Battleground. I feel like even there's been so much talk about was it botched, was it not? Well, I've heard this, well, I've heard that, and no real concrete evidence one way or the other. Right. Where it almost makes me feel like other Vince or whoever decides was just like, let's do this, let's get some, you know, hype going behind stuff and get people watching. Maybe. Um, speaking of that. Yay. Uh, well, I was, I was going to bring up something else for Battleground, but I'll transition into that. Uh-huh. Um, that U.S. title match at Battleground, the outcome was changed mid-match. It's still not been concreted as far as I heard. Um, I have. I heard. Who'd you hear? Because the only person that I got that is, like, trustworthy, I suppose, was Meltzer. And he said that he heard that it was before the match, but hadn't heard for sure that it was during the match. Oh, uh, Brian Alvarez. Which is... Same. I think he works for the same. Yeah, they do the Observer News. Uh, he said that it was changed mid-match. Like, not not just before the finish, but, like, mid-match. Yeah, like a- halfway, quarter, and way through. And them knocking the ref out was not originally part of it. And that's kind of why it looked like weird and it didn't was, play into the match yeah. like it normally would. Right. I mean, that makes sense. Um, there's two, two reasons, though. The, there's two thought processes as to why they changed it mid-match. One, the more unlikely one, was because they knew Chris Jericho was returning and they wanted to set up Chris Jericho versus Kevin Owens for SummerSlam, which is, I say is unlikely because now it's being heavily rumored that it's going to be Kevin Owens versus Shane McMahon at SummerSlam, which is dumb. Mm-hmm. I'd rather see KO and Jericho. Uh, the other reason was to allow AJ to win the belt back on SmackDown so that it was on TV to boost the ratings which definitely which sounds like a they w- should have just done in the first place which sounds like a wwe thought process right there right don't let him win at madison square garden and then let him win at battleground or i'm i'm still okay with the, the madison square garden thing because it was different and unexpected yeah. no i agree but i always say all the time like i don't really care for playing hot potato with championship belts but depending on how they do it, it can be fine. Right. And I feel like with these two guys, and depending on how the wins go, like so far, I've been okay with it. I mean, yeah, the Battleground one was a wonky, weird finish. Yeah. But th- if you think of it, if you go back when this feud is over, and you look at it as a whole, you'd be like, all right, I, I, I get that now. Opposed to just looking at just that match and going, that was messed up, I don't get it. It makes no sense. I'm still confused. Right. It was the same with, like we were saying, I was saying to you last week, adding Jericho. I wasn't the only one that had the issues with that. (laughs) Right. But like you said, but viewing it as a whole, when you look back after it's all said and done, it makes more sense. But actually probably uh, less sense since it's not going to be Kevin Owens and Jericho at SummerSlam. It made made sense adding him. It made sense what they did. It's just the, the issues I had had nothing to do with it making sense. It had to do with I felt like. After the match, it was almost like they completely forgot that Jericho. I don't. I, it doesn't matter because we are. I already went into like ten minutes of digression okay. Wednesday on it. But um, it's not that I didn't think it made, didn't make sense. It was that I didn't like how they did it. Okay. As far as when the match ended and whatnot. Speaking of battleground, I'll continue with that. Um, there may have been another reason why it was so quiet during the Punjabi prison match. You mean besides people couldn't see? Besides people couldn't see. Oh, I know what the other reason is. Uh, since tickets, since Royal Rumble is also going to be in Philadelphia. Tickets went on sale. Tickets went on sale during that match. Yeah, I, thought, I heard it was like 45 minutes before that match. No, it was like, they went on sale yeah. at like 10.45. That's what it was, yeah, that's what yeah, it was. Yeah, so... Pretty much the start of the match. Yeah, so people went to people left get in line to went, go. waited in line to get tickets to the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Uh, another thing, a lot of people like um, JR and, and uh, X-Pac pointed out, I think X-Pac, that 
Another thing that took people out of that match was there was no sort of real noise when a superstar hit the structure. Yeah, because there was bamboo. <laughs> yeah, um, that's why possibly why they brought out the kendo sticks to add that sort of Hits sound. Hits the chairs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I get. I never really thought of it that way. Because when, when they're in like a hell in a cell or a steel cage and they hit the structure, you can hear it and it adds something to... Yeah, I get that. That doesn't take me out of it, though, because, right. I mean, it's the same. I mean, obviously it's not the same, but the way my brain sees it, it's like in a regular match when the guys bounce off the ropes, you don't hear anything. Yeah, but the ropes aren't supposed to hurt. Yeah, I know, but, but they do. Um, but, yeah, I, I, it didn't really take me out either. It is just something, like, I just didn't realize... I never thought about it that way. It was a match that was on par with what I thought it was going to be. Um, and like I said before the show, and I said during our review of the show, the only reason I had an issue with it is because you can't see. Yeah. I mean, they did have enough angles, luckily, and they did enough stuff in between the, the two portions of it. Right. So you could see. But, like, I mean... People have seen the pictures, and if you watch, you can see. But when they did, like, the hard cam, you can't see crap. No, nothing. And it's not like, uh, why can't I think? I feel like an idiot. In D.C., the uh, tombstones that are all lined up in every angle you look, it's a straight line. Yeah. You're telling me they couldn't have found a way to to make the Punjabi prison, like, a certain way, so no matter what angle you look, there was, like, a... a a hole you know yeah I mean? they could have lined up all the bars together yeah. opposed to where it just looked like a bunch of hashtags with <laughs> i think there's people moving behind them yeah no i agree um so another big rumor heading into SummerSlam. big is, time actually you know what i'm gonna shift gears a little bit uh brock lesnar there's a thought that he may be Asked to participate in a UFC pay-per-view in December. The super match? Against John Jones. Yeah. Uh, I have two problems with this. One, they're just doing it for ratings. Yeah. Um, and two, John Jones was on Undisputed a couple days ago with, with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Yeah. And Shannon asked him about, you know, if you win this title from Cormier... Do you see yourself moving up a weight class or moving down a weight class to get a double title? And he said, John Jones says that it would be harder for him to go up a weight class because where he's at now, at like 205. Is that tall 205? He would end up having to fight somebody that was like 265. Right. So he would have to gain... Like, he wouldn't have to gain a lot of weight to make the weight class. But right. in order to compete... He'd have to gain... He'd have to gain yeah. quite a bit of weight. Right. Uh, so he said that he... He said he he would wait for the right opponent. Yeah. So if a smaller heavyweight won the title... Which is definitely not Brock. Which is def Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, not even a little bit. <laughs> but now reports are that Lesnar versus John Jones could happen in December. Yeah, I heard that. They both said uh, possibly any time, anywhere. I don't care to see that match or that fight. No. Yeah. I, I mean, John Jones is, is good in the ring, the octagon. Uh, he's technically undefeated. His only loss was a was a DQ. Afterwards. He was hitting Mark Hamill oh. with elbows. Yeah, in the wrong spot, right? Yeah. Um, like on the top of his head. Um, so yeah, I don't, I, I don't, will it help boost ratings for UFC? Probably. Do I think it's actually a good matchup? No. I mean, you can at least say Brock, cause Brock is, what's the word I'm looking for? He's, uh, a lot quicker than he looks. Yeah. Um, I'd expect it to be as similar to what Jones did against Rampage where he talks about, I am not scared to grapple with you. Right. But then the match comes and he just sticks, sticks and moves. And Plus with Jones, if he's going to put on that extra weight to fight Brock, he's probably going to lose some of his speed. 
Yeah. I mean, he's not used to being that large. Yeah. Brock's been that large his whole life. And is fast. Yeah. Like if Brock were to get smaller, he would <laughs> be even faster, faster yeah. and it would be ridiculous. He'd probably be he'd probably be fast <laughs> enough where it mess him up. <laughs> right. Like he would throw a punch and miss and fall down. He'd be like top heavy, like whoop. Yeah. Uh, so that's probably happening in December. So, moving on to SummerSlam. Summer, SummerSlam. It is being reported that <laughs> Seth and Dean Ambrose will defeat Cesaro and Sheamus for the Raw Tag Team titles, becoming a new babyface team, uh, which would later lead down to or lead up to a Dean Ambrose heel turn um revenge yeah which I get I'm glad they don't do a full shield reunion and then have it happen uh cause then they'd have to do it again and then have Roman do it <laughs> right um but so I don't know also Triple H is mad at Seth and Dean for the way they ended the match on Raw on Raw where they shared a hug which I, I missed I missed. I heard as about well. it, but I missed it. Uh, but Triple H viewed it as a bigger deal than the eventual Shield-like fist bump that's that coming. That they want to lead to, right? But uh, you know what? The heat of the moment. You just want to match. And the way Dean reacted afterwards. Yeah. Like, it's not like they did it and he stuck there. He just did it and it was like, all right, I'm out of here. Yeah. And then and then shot down the the fist bump. Right. Which will happen at SummerSlam after they win the titles. Right. Uh <sighs> Also, speaking of SummerSlam, this is... Okay, so, J- Jason Jordan. Jason Angle Jordan. Jason <laughs> Jordan Angle. I'm writing his name one of those two ways with a hyphen in there, because it's funny to me. Obtuse. Uh, is rumored that he, and they'll set it up this coming Monday on a Miz TV segment, he's going to challenge Miz and win the Intercontinental title at SummerSlam. Which is going to lead to... In my opinion, this could lead to the. This is the perfect setup for Miz versus Kurt right. Angle. It is, I agree. But, but <laughs> Kurt Angle still hasn't even been tested to be cleared yet. Yeah, he hasn't been given a physical or anything. Uh, and the actual plan is for the feud between Miz and Angle to be similar to that of Miz and Daniel Bryan with no physical altercations. So just as annoying. Yeah. A great even, one that you're like, this needs to end in a fight. Right. And it can't. So you're stupid. Yes. Good. That sounds great. I know, right? I mean, whatever. Uh, we need to we need to change Miz and add the Taraj because Miz and Maurice is going to be too much like Mike and Maria. But we're also going to recycle this exact same thing with Miz and the general manager of the show that Did, he's on. They literally, they literally do that so much with Daniel Bryant that any time his music comes on, I, I mentally tune out because I don't want to hear what he has to say. Because I know Who's he not, not hitting end. today? <laughs> It's gonna. It's not gonna end up being what it needs to be or what I want. So I'm just like whatever. I don't care what he has to say. Right. Uh. So I don't think. I don't think Jason Jordan should beat the Miz. Uh, I don't. But it's smart to have him do it this quick. Yes. Only. Only if it leads to an actual feud between Miz and Angle. Right. If it. If there's no fighting afterwards, who cares? Uh, also there's supposed to be a, they're rumoring an Emma versus, or an Emma and Jason Jordan love angle. Uh, that's right. I heard. Cause she said the thing to Kurt the yeah. last week or whatever. Yeah. I don't care. I don't, I don't tune into wrestling to see who's going to start dating. Nope. If you're already in that sort of situation, Ms. and Maurice, Bruce and Lana, Mike and Maria, I don't really care for them anyway. I don't I don't want to see forced ones. Yeah. Don't I don't want to. If I want to do that, I'll go watch reruns of 90210. I bet you will. I won't, but I'm just saying cuz I've never watched that show in my life. No, I haven't. Uh No, you're going to watch things that that's what the show's about. It's right. about relationships. Yeah, I'll go about... watch the notebook. Yeah. <laughs> I just, uh, yeah, I don't need to see. I don't need to see it. Oh, um, okay. Whatever. Uh, I'm going to save that. 
I'm going to save this last one so that we can transition into the the fantasy booking. Okay. Unless, I mean, are you going to add some or? I don't even remember what mine were. Were they any good? Did we care? <laughs> uh, most of the good ones were the ones I already covered. It says yeah. Well, yeah. Um. Well, all right. So you were already talking about SummerSlam, so I'll bring this one up. It's still rumored that John Cena is going to go against Jinder oh, yeah. at SummerSlam, but they're saying that Jinder is going to win again, which I get it to a point. I get it because they're, they're trying to make it so basically Jinder was this unexpected champion that can beat everybody. But then he's going to get beat eventually. Well, duh, because that's how it has to go. Basically, the odds are that he's not going to win, so he's going to win type type build of what they're doing. What if he ends up eventually losing to Sami Zayn? How ironic would that be? That'd be great, actually. Um, you already said that one for Seth and Dean. Um, oh. oh, yeah. Sami Zayn's supposed to get a major title push after SummerSlam. Right. Um, there's also rumors, or I shouldn't say rumors, there's been a bunch of backlash, I suppose, on uh, social media how Sasha had her shoulder kind of up when Bailey pinned her on Raw for the number one contendership, so they may play that into their story. And also into Sasha's supposed to be having a heel turn soon. You know what annoys me about that? Is that... Now, because all these fans are going to nitpick that, WWE has to alter the story arc for that. It doesn't necessarily bother me, though, because it means they're at least seeing what's hot topics between, you know, the social media, so at least somebody's paying attention. But it doesn't also mean that they're paying attention to the right stuff. Right. But, no, I get, I get what you're saying, but in the same I'm it doesn't bother me unless they ruin it. I mean, because we've seen their inability to rewrite on the fly. That's usually based on injuries. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I get you. Or the shakeup. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nikki Bella has already been teasing appearances for SummerSlam. Who cares? Whoop, whoop de do. <laughs> um, I guess there's been some more Ring of Honor talents that are going to be jumping to WWE soon. There's another guy that uh, ended up leaving GFW. Magnus? Uh, I don't remember. He's married to Mickey James. Maybe. Um, so Jason Jordan's going to be on, on Miz TV, right? Yep. Yeah, because they already announced that. Um, he already said that one last week about possible triple threat for the... SmackDown Championship on SmackDown. I mean, on SummerSlam. Uh, more more than likely, you're going to have Kevin Owens versus Shane, which you already said. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. No, especially when Kevin Owens could have matches against other people. I feel like it's... Like, I like Shane, but I feel like it's just like... He wants to have matches, so they end up forcing ones in. Yeah, he's like, hey, Dad... I want to have a match. Or it's just like, hey, you know how everyone would rather it be Daniel, but we can't? Let's make it me, so it's one of us at least. Because I get the thought behind of having you know, your general manager or your manager. Why not have him fight Miz? And having interactions. Because that makes sense. Stop making sense. <laughs> Jesus. I just, it's, we just barely came off of a Shane McMahon. No, that was... That was over a year ago. Yeah. Sounds WrestleMania. Yeah. I I just, I don't care. I don't want to see it. Like, I just... It's not like he was ever that great of a wrestler anyway. He's what I deemed the... He's he's, He's a spot monkey. He's he's the other version of spot monkey. He's he's the, the epitome of spot monkey. What people think Finn Balor is a spot monkey? No, Shane McMahon... Is those spot are two monkey. different spot monkeys to me. But that's what I'm saying. But people people will use that term to cover one thing, right? And, and they'll I, say I know, Shane but, yeah. is a spot monkey, and also Finn is a spot monkey. But there's a difference because Shane is the one where he has high spots, and it's literally a spot that's supposed to be the holy crap of every match that he's in. Yeah, he does the coast to coast, or he jumps off of something. Right, and then there's that's it. 
fin or gets put put through something right or the fin type spot monkey where everything in his match is set up for a spot for his moves yeah but that's just that's just the that's just the way that's technically wrestling yeah but there's there's some people like seth rollins is really good about everything that they do it feels organic and like it's part of the match and the same with aj opposed to like the young bucks for example are called spot monkeys not only because they do do a lot of high spots, but because everything in their match is set up specifically at a certain spot for spots. Not, we're going to organically work to it. Spots. Spots. <clears throat> All right. Uh, another rumor is that great Kali isn't going to be full-time with WWE, but he is going to be making at least a couple more appearances, or an additional appearance at a minimum. Not sure what yet. Which is even more dumb... Because of the fact that when he showed up, the announcers kept saying, he's back. Hmm. He was. Um, I guess Chris Jericho recorded some of the South Bar Regional Wrestling show after SmackDown, which was cool. And then it's reported that Darren Young will be back on WWE within the next month or so. He's already been at the Performance Center getting back in cardio shape and whatnot. Am I the only one that doesn't care? I didn't like him when he was primetime players with Titus. Right. He's not even a mid-card talent, and you're just going to bring him back and be like, okay, well, where can we put you? Well, let's take somebody else off TV for a minute so we can use you. Let's just leave him at NXT. Yeah. It's already down there. Yeah. And then my last one, which I think is going to play into what you were doing, is... Don't do it. WWE's... May be planning to send some of the main roster guys to NXT okay. in the next couple of months, which also may, may be part of the um, next shakeup they do whenever they do. Yeah, so Vince wants to do another superstar shakeup sometime after SummerSlam. Which I'm okay with if they do it on a smaller scale. They may wait until after Survivor Series, which in my opinion makes more sense because you have your, your traditional Survivor Series match. Mm-hmm. Where you have Team Robbers, Team SmackDown, Traders. Yeah, you can, and you can play it into it. You can just be like, have a guy that's on on Raw that helps somebody on SmackDown. Yeah, vice or, versa or yeah. leading up to it, somebody's like, we want you on Team Raw, and he says, no, I'm going to go to Team SmackDown. Oh, I have another rumor I just remembered. Um, but yes, that also involves moving people, from what I heard, back to NXT. Right. So it would be people... Th- Wrestlers that had success in NXT, and for whatever reason, it didn't translate into the main roster. Right. Um, but I think it should just go to anybody. I think it should be anyone that they're not sure, A, what they're doing with right now, mm-hmm. or they want to refine or maybe work on some different gimmick stuff to see how it works. Dolph Why Ziggler not? should go it's to a NXT. performance center. Yeah. Dolph Ziggler should go down to NXT. They should rebrand or re... Uh, Heal up, son. Re-gimmick Harper and Rowan and let them be a tag team in NXT. Because those two guys would be great for Authors of Pain to get some work in with. I heard about another rumor, by the way. Um, or I remembered one. Oh, also, speaking of former NXT, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh, yeah. Um, a lot of people in the know are saying that he is already planning his return to New Japan. Um, and they completely contradict themselves in that article you're talking about. He's, he... I, They're basically saying that he, he, he plays he plays it easy right now because he can, because he's so popular that he doesn't have to go above and beyond. Right. And he's older, because he's almost 40. So he doesn't have to, you know, take big bumps, high bumps, yeah. and take a chance of getting hurt. He's so popular that he's just in cruise control. And he started doing it towards the end of his NXT tenure. Right. Where the article that you sent that I'm, that I'm referring to as well, where they contradicted themselves, is they said, in New Japan, it's more expected for you to basically make it look like a real fight, take harder hits, take more hits... And make it look like a real fight. Yeah. Yet, he's in cruise control in WWE and doesn't have to and is 
doing it intentionally because he can prolong his career. So that means he's going to go back to New Japan where he's going to have to take more heavier hits. Well, I mean, he, knowing that he's – if he knows full well that he wants to go back to New Japan and is going to take those bumps, why not get there as safely as possible? Right, but that's – I that makes more sense the way I read it as worded. Yeah. I didn't take it that way, but right. that makes sense. Because, I mean, why would you go boss to the wall and risk not being able to go back? Especially when you're in a company now that's okay with you not going balls to the wall. I think when we see the match with Cena, it'll it may depend, because his his match on SmackDown with Baron Corbin was better than the pay per view one. Yeah, I think if he if they end up letting him have a match with AJ too. All right, so I got I got two more rumors, so I don't forget which is part of this one. Okay, excuse me, AJ. One of the rumors, or actually, I shouldn't say a rumor. It was out of AJ's mouth. He has told Vince, from what I remember, or at least WWE creative, that if if or when they put him and Shinsuke into a feud, yeah, it needs to be a long burn, not a, a quick one. Right. It needs to be one where they have some back and forth and some build up and some major teases of, of stuff. That way, when the match actually happens, people are just like retardedly excited for right. it. Right. And I don't know if I read it. Or if it's just me wanting it. He also said, or he should say, um, that they should just let them control the match. Like, creatively. Um, he was on the Edge and Christians podcast and said stuff like that, I believe. Where he, he said that he, that he did want to have more control of the creative, the creative aspect of their match if it's with Shinsuke. Because right. if Vince came to him and said, listen, AJ Shinsuke, I'm going to put you guys in a match. Do I need to whatever it is I you to want to do. It ultimately, but do it. Yeah, I just it'd be a great match. I mean, if you want to bring, there's just with 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 PWG and and Ring of Honor and New Japan and all the other promotions, not counting Global Force because it's not good. <laughs> um. I still haven't watched. I just can't. Why not? Like, I've said it before. So, like, WWE, you're better at the storytelling than these other promotions. Definitely. While these other promotions are better in that in the ring, in that they allow the superstars to do what they do best. They tell in-ring stories generally right. better than WWE. You have the talent now to allow them to do their own in-ring stories. WWE, if they wanted to, could be the whole package. Yeah. You have the the written voice story and then the in-ring story. Right. If they allowed them to. And then you have Global Force, which is awful on both fronts. Oh, so bad. I, Their I, production value, as far as visually, is better than Ring of Honor. Right. But that's it. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm getting ready to stop watching because it's been... Already, I watched like two weeks and I was like, I can't. I want Lashley to come back to WWE. I do too. That's all. Um, my other rumor is is that it has been rumored, since that's why it's a rumor, that they've been having Luke and Carl uh, on house shows their faces. Okay. So I don't know if you noticed or not, but when they came out at Monday Night Raw, they technically came out as faces. Yeah. They came out, they addressed the crowd like a face. Right. So the rumor is is that they're doing that on purpose to kind of slowly, when well, I say slowly, it's going to be a quick turnaround, but turn around into um, them being faces. And then going forward, we already have the Bray and Finn feud starting. It's also rumored that the Wyatt family may be reunited. Right. And then the Ballard Club may evolve. So, like, they go to Finn's aid? Yeah. I'd be okay with that. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know how you're going to do the Wyatt family. You'd have to do the Wyatt family after the shakeup. So it makes no sense right now to just all of a sudden be like, oh, by the way, Rowan and Harper are now on Raw. Yeah. Um, I, no, I agree with you, and also I don't know. 
like it hasn't been said that it's going to happen at SummerSlam or, you know, it may be towards the tail end. Because, I mean, I don't know for a fact, but do you you know that I don't think that SummerSlam is going to be Finn and Bray's only or end of feud. Yeah, it shouldn't. Like, it's just starting. Those are two big names. Yeah. There's no way. It would have ended at SummerSlam if it if it progressed like it was initially supposed to. Yeah. But since they're just getting back to it now. Right. I say there's no way that it ends at SummerSlam, but that's my logic versus WWE logic. Right. Uh, hashtag fire road talk. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't fit. Uh, sure does. I don't know. It's, it's, it's funny because so much could happen in the near future that it's making me stick around. You know what I mean? Like for me, like I said, the past couple of weeks, especially raw, the product just hasn't been as good for me in my opinion. And if I didn't have things to look forward to, I probably would have just given up on it completely. The things that annoy me with Raw don't generally have anything to do with the the matches per se. It's usually all the extra crap that just annoys me. And it's like you get a three hour show that doesn't mean you can use a large majority of that just to put in filler. Well, like I'm just like the Kurt Angle Jason Jordan thing. Don't care. Yeah, I'm as done is, with it. as is right now, it's Didn't just stupid. It. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it can't get better. Um, the Big Cass and Enzo split. Again, dumb. Dude, didn't need it. So I was going to say about them, how do you think like teams like them feel if Dean and Seth win the tag team? Champions? Oh, I know, right? It's like we were a legitimate tag team, and then you reform these guys yeah. to do it when it could have easily been us. Yeah. Even the Revival, even though they're not on main. Could be like... The Revival? Not the Revival, I'm sorry. Uh, DIY? DIY. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> That still bothers me so much. I mean, it probably wouldn't had Champa not blown out his knee and that they were in a feud right now. Right. And I could see their matches. I'd probably be happy with it. Um, but given the circumstances around the whole thing, <sighs> so dumb. Like, okay, so Champa injured himself the... the Thursday before that takeover. Right. And then further injured himself at takeover. I thought he hurt his ankle on Thursday and then he tore uh, his knee. Originally, on. they thought they th- I think they thought he hurt his ankle, but I think like that caused an initial like a chain reaction. Right. Uh So like if you can change the outcome of a title match mid-match, IE Battleground for the US title, why not change this whole storyline mid-match where let Champa like they they stay together. Champa goes out because of injury. Give Johnny a singles push. Then let Champa come back and be, you know, upset that it happened. I don't know. I just no, I'm not saying that doesn't make sense. I'm just saying, eh. I it just especially in a in a division in a in a roster where your tag team division is scarce thin yeah no pun intended i guess because like the they're big two main teams are very large um oh yeah but in the same as far as actual like talented tag teams revivals right. on main roster diy was the best aop's getting better but still needs work heavy machinery needs a ton of work eh. need a ton of work eh. dude their match with aop they need a ton of work and your aunt is retarded mm. if you don't agree with I, they need a lot of work. Okay. It's obvious how green they are. Yeah. <laughs> sure. That's all I gotta say, because I don't really care anymore. I mean, we're just saying, like, we've seen AOP have matches with the Revival and DIY, and then a bunch of jobbers. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, obviously, you could the jobbers are green. I mean, you can put, so you put them in a match with Heavy Machinery. Like, at... I can't say for sure because I'm, I'm not going to see it, but if you put Heavy Machinery versus DIY, you can't. I don't think you could tell me that it wouldn't be as decent of a match as DIY versus Authors of Pain. I can't tell because Heavy Machinery, the longest match they've had on TV was against AOP, and it wasn't that great. Yeah, because AOP 
all isn't... their other matches against jobbers were short squash matches that right. just show, showcased their three moves. AOP is not built yet to carry the carry a, a match. No, but they can play up to their talent, and it's already been proven. It was proven in their matches with Revival. Was it the more the I think about threat? it, is it them playing up, or was it the other teams being able to play down and carry the match? You still got to play your part. And right. You still got to do what you're supposed to do, and they did that well. Opposed to Heavy Machinery, all the matches I've seen in theirs, it's... Mm. I don't know. I, I don't feel the same way about them in general as you do, so... I don't care one way or the other. Like I, I'm not against them or behind them. But, I mean, you can, you can, I could say you could just ask B, but I already know he's going to say the same thing as me because we have the same thought behind it. So it would be like me just intentionally telling you to ask somebody that I know is going to say the same thing as me. Right. No, I mean, that's, that's fine. I, I have other people I could ask. Um, like, the, the, the gimmick to me, I, I don't... Oh, well, the gimmick's terrible. I, I don't dislike it per se. Like, it's funny. But I feel like it takes away from when they're trying to be serious. It's too... Cause it, it, for you, lack of a better term, it's too gimmicky. Yeah. Well, like I said, like, they're, they're matching with the jobbers were, like, three to five minute long matches. Right. Same Not with same. Authors of Pain versus jobbers. Right. Right. It, they're squash matches to show how strong they are. Yeah. And whatnot. But, I don't know, nothing, nothing they've... The only thing they've done to me where I was like, oh, wow, that was great, is was in the match with Authors of Pain where Otis did his slam of I don't remember which one it was. It was just, it was really fluid and it looked well done. Other than that, the whole match was remotely sloppy on both ends. Right. And I've not seen a match at a heavy machinery that made me just go like I need to see them every week. Where Authors of Pain are at least intimidating. I've had some matches where I'm like I want to see them house some people. I don't get that out of heavy, heavy machinery. I mean, if they have a match and I'm like, ugh, great. I'm just like, okay, cool. Could it be because of the gimmick? Put us, put it, put not the same, but, or yeah, reverse gimmicks. No, because when they first came out, I was more like, ugh, with them being comedic, and now I like at least get a kick out of it. Right. But it's just. But with them being comedic, yeah. it's not like I want to see them house people. With. Authors of Pain being legit heels and badasses, like, you just want to see them house people. Yeah, but because they're big guys. Like, I'm, I'm okay with the thought of heavy machinery going out and housing people. It's just they haven't done anything in matches where I'm like, I need to see that happen again. I still chalk that up to the booking aspect of it. Like, well, everything is that in wrestling. Yeah, because... Well, no, because there's, there's talented people out there that even if you book them poorly... They still come out good. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's far and few between, but yeah. That's but funny. I just, I don't know. I feel like Heavy Machinery not having been able, us not having been able to see them versus DIY or The Revival or, you know, a, a better tag team. I feel like that's hurting the, the, the image of their in-ring ability. And I've been watching Authors of Pain since they were doing the same exact thing that Heavy Machinery's been doing. Right. But they've had the matches with DIY and the Revival. Yeah, but what I'm saying is when I watched Authors of Pain before, even when they were even more green than they are now, I was still like, I want to I want to see more of them. With Heavy Machinery, like... Well, plus their I, gimmick I is better. Like, I get your point behind that, but that's, that's not deterring my thought process because to me the, the gimmick unless it's something that's completely off-putting where I, mean, I just don't want to see Aside from gimmick they're the exact same team. They're two giant guys that are going to house everybody. Aside from the gimmick that's what they are. It's not the same though. Just uh, because they're hosses and have hoss matches doesn't mean they're the same because AOP I guess, I guess you're right as far as the gimmick because it's how they wrestle is completely different, though. Which, yeah, partly yeah, gimmick, but that's also heavy machinery. Them. Actually, has moves. I don't know. As Keep moving. I'm done. I don't give a fuck. Running right now. people over. What's next? I don't care. Uh, next week is our next up. Not next week. Next up is our our fantasy booking. Right. Uh, 
if they do a superstar shakeup. No, I do mine first, and it's going to be quicker to the point. Cause yeah, I, I and like it doesn't have to be a whole shake; it just one th- one thing out of it you want to see I'm just, happen. I'm I'm literally just going to give what I want out of it, opposed to like this person, this and because the, there's too many wrestlers to break it down that much right now, especially not knowing what they're going to do. And I know it's fantasy, but I like to at least have some reality behind it. Okay, or that's my thought. I'd like them to have more free agents than just one. I'm not saying a lot, like maybe just have like one or two. Right. Um, Obviously, no, I said I want more, so I meant one or two more. Yeah. So instead of it just being Cena, like throw throw a Roman in there or just put him on SmackDown, let him turn the heel there, something like that. Um, I kind of would like them to put, and I I get why they wouldn't, um, but having uh, The Miz and Maurice on the same show with Mike and Maria so they can end up having a feud or excuse me, be smarter about it and have them start taking jabs at each other on separate shows each week, leading to a survivor series match, something like that. I'm okay and, with that. And then have like the two weeks before have, or say, we'll say three weeks. So there's a week in between where something doesn't have, but have one week where one of the couples shows up on the other brand to other distract the other, or just are there to watch, per se, and then vice versa happens two weeks, so it's not like one right after the other. I mean, they could. That won't matter to me, but okay. like s- stuff like that, even though they are split shows and they split the brand, I still think they could find a way to interject other stuff in to have some stuff possibly go where you either have a free agent or have a person that just like randomly shows up on the other other show and i say random to the fans not to the uh wwa like obviously they know and it's planned out but to us we're like oh you didn't see that coming right okay that's it yeah more or less because any of the stuff that i really want a fantasy book is just going to annoy me because i know they're not going to what if uh what if mike and maurice or sorry Miz and maurice um started having marital issues and then they seek out help from the <laughs> power of love couple mike and Mar- mike and maria and then that leads into a feud yeah i'm okay with that where like typical movie like couples retreat right where there's the couples that don't have necessarily problems but they're going with the couple that has right. problems and then the one that doesn't have problems is realizing that they have problems yeah. uh so where Mike and Maria are the, the, the gurus and the mentors. They start realizing there's cracks in their relationship. At least that would make sense to Mike and Maria's gimmick then. Yeah. Because right now it's just like... Stupid. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That, yeah, that would be cool. Uh, so, I just I just want Roman oh. Reigns to turn heel and go to SmackDown. And I, and I also want them to actually start working on factions. Like, it'd be, it'd be kind of nice... All right, sorry. I just thought of one. You're fine. It'll be quick. Okay. Titus O'Neil. Make him the free agent where Titus Brand, he starts getting ones from each brand. Okay. And then he can have Titus Brand on SmackDown and Raw. And then... Five Live, NXT. Yeah. <laughs> literally. <laughs> yeah. I'd be okay with that. Um, He's trying to build it worldwide, and you can't just yeah. do it worldwide based on we have an American and a Japanese guy, therefore we're worldwide. Right. Like, add more more to it. Then even, like, leading into that, you could have a Survivor Series match where you have the Titus brand, where he's got his people from each brand, yeah. versus a combination of the Smack three brands wrong. together. Yeah, NXT, yeah. That would... That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, I could, I could actually I could get behind that. I um, feel like they should do more with the Titus brand, because it'd be cool if they did. I just, I want Roman to go to SmackDown... Like, okay, so WWE wants Roman to be the face of the company. He's going to be popular first. Right. He's, by the fan standards, not ready for that. Send him to SmackDown. Let him be the top heel. He can take out gender for all I care. Yeah. I mean, you can't boo both of them, can you? What? You can't boo both of them. What do you mean? Like, if, if, it, was, if it was announced that Jinder Mahal was going to fight Roman Reigns for the WWE title... Right. Are people really... Do they hate Roman that much to where they're going to cheer gender? Yes. And do they dislike the whole gender angle that much to where they're going to cheer Roman? No. 
So I'm saying that based double on double turn. I'm saying that based on uh, battleground and people are actually cheering for gender. Yeah, double. Well, that's because it was Philadelphia. Double turn. Gender turns face. Roman turns heel. Gender can be like, you know what? I was wrong. You've all accepted me in this country and whatever. This is great. I love America. Celebration, big boom. Uh, and then Roman. I don't know where. Shut up. Yeah, just I mean, have Roman be the top heel on your B show, even though it's kind of been the A show lately. Subjective, but yeah. Um. I yeah, like, and then go. You know, give it like a year, then get rid of the brand split and let Roman be the face of your company. I like the brand split. I, I do, and I don't. I mean. Even when they first first did it, the only reason I didn't is because... I didn't like it at first because it didn't work the first time. I watched it a little bit during the first one. Like, I'd watch here and there, like, once or twice a month. But I didn't really pay too much attention. But I remember going to the SmackDown one and just being like, this is, yeah. pretty, this, this is crap. And there were people probably that didn't watch Raw and only watched SmackDown. That's probably why they didn't like wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Um, but yeah, I mean the brand split, the brand split for me makes it feel like, I don't want to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try a really bad analogy. So you're just going to do a normal analogy? Yeah. <laughs> so a few, probably last year at some time, a whole bunch of Walmarts had shut down, Right. Uh And in reality, it's because they were too close to other Walmarts. And they probably weren't needed in the first place. Right. So they essentially cannibalized themselves. Right. Having WWE, when you have Ring of Honor, New Japan, Global Force Wrestling, uh, PWG. You can't, you don't need need to put PWG in there because they don't. Five Star, Triple A, Lucha Underground. Progress. All these other all these other promotions right. and you're going to take your one promotion and split it into what makes it feel like three separate promotions. Right. I don't feel like you need to do that. I'm okay with the NXT being separate. I, I agree with you. I feel like the reason like kind of behind it is since Vince doesn't want to admit that other promotions exist, it's his way of saying we're com- we're competing with other promotions, but it's just us. You know what I mean? You're competing with yourself. Right, which he's intentionally doing. Instead of being like, we're competing with these other promotions but that we're not going to have stuff with, I'm just going to break us apart and make it look like we're competing with other promotions when it's really just us. How does that get you ratings? Especially when, when it's really hard to find a happy medium of rosters to the point where... Well, if you where... shake it up the way they do... That's what I'm saying. If they do a shake-up, instead of doing, like, as many people as they did, do a couple here and there. Or make it a... I don't want to say an open-ended one, because that sounds kind of dumb, but like make it where draft. it's like... Huh? Like another draft? No, like, like don't do it all at once, where you're like, all right, we did we did this draft, like you said, for the shake-up, 15 people difference. No, just, all right, this week we're doing... This guy's going there, this yeah, one's going there. Yeah, his feuds end... They yeah. branch off and go other places. Yeah, do as, it organically opposed to like messing up like they did last time. Right. Where as, it's like we just did a superstar shake up in the middle of feuds. Yeah. And wonder why ratings fail, fell. Yeah, there I there's got to be a better way for them to do do it. Um Yeah, totally like you already just said. If you got somebody that has a feud that ends and then after that you're like I don't know where we're going with this person. Next SmackDown, you go. Yeah. Raw, you go. I wonder if that's something we could do for an episode where we each make up our own three-show rosters. Probably could. Do we want to pencil that in for... Light pencil? Heavy eraser? Well, I say that just because we're going to have to go through the roster and have them all written down. That's a big roster. I'm okay with it. All right, so we'll we'll light pencil it, but with like a heavy undertone for two weeks away, so we have more time to do it. No, uh, it's not about the how long to get it done. It's the matter of me mentally wanting to do it. 
<laughs> right. So I say we'll give it two weeks. That'll give you more time to get mentally prepared to do it. Eh, I'm either going to want to or I'm not. So if you want to do it, we'll do it. I say let's do it. All right. Because there's times where I'm like, I, I say I don't, I don't care, and you tell me I have to. So let's do it. All right. So write it down so you don't forget. I won't forget. Yeah, right. I'll ask you on Tuesday. But I don't remember. I won't forget. We're gonna do. We're gonna make up our own three show roster. Three show. Yep. Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. And we'll absorb two hundred five into it. Um. Yeah. Just count them as main roster. Yes, because I think while they are specific to Raw, that's where they should stay, and I think the women should be specific to a single brand. NXT. <laughs> no. Um, I say that now that I actually like, uh, well, I shouldn't say a bunch. I like a few of the women wrestlers. but I mean, keep the NXT women's division, but if you move up from NXT to the main roster, the women's division should be on one program. Speaking of the women's division, still remotely looking forward to the May Young Classic. I say remotely. Because, like, they had that qualifying match that was on NXT a couple weeks ago. It was terrible. Yeah, and I was just like, ugh. I'm hoping they're getting these out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. There's it, still a bunch of them that I want to see that I have seen matches out of that I liked. So. Is it going to be, like, a two-night event? Like, the, um... Cruiserweight one? The UK? Or the UK. Uh, it starts the 28th, I believe. That's all I... Because I'd rather watch some of the later rounds. I'm gonna, I want to watch all of it. Like, but, I'll skip yeah. the first round and then go into the second. I usually go into things like that, even if it's two chicks that I either don't know or aren't that great. I look at it as I'm going to watch just to see if I can visibly notice the evolution of them getting better later on down the road. Okay. That's kind of why I started paying attention to even Nia Jax matches, which was hard. <laughs> Unlike her. See what I did there? <laughs> uh, that was mean. Because um, she's gotten a lot better. Oh, one last thing before we get out of here. Uh, Elias Sampson, going forward. No P. Now known as Elias. Yeah, so now people can't mess his last name up. Right. And Samson. Samson. Well, it's like, it's like Clemson. People say it different ways. Clemson. Even though it's spelt the same way. I say how it's spelt, I believe. I mean, I can kind of hear the P in it. Yeah, some people will add the P. Like heavy clump clemson it's clemson clemson yeah yeah and it's samson well people just got it confused because obviously sam son with the p yeah is a more and then samford and son i mean just kidding uh so yeah further known full will be further the artist formerly known as he will now be trying to say going forward he will be called elias and that's it yeah no longer the drifter which I liked. I did too. Uh, and no longer Elias Sampson, just Elias. Which he's been doing the Who Wants to Walk with Elias for a couple of weeks, so. Right. Uh, Whatever. I don't know. So Somebody said it was because it, if you put it on a championship belt, it looked better just to have Elias. Potato, potato. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, uh, so check us out. <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. SoundCloud. Deuces. Bravo.